Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. You know, the more I look at climate change, the more I see it as a big marketing scheme. And certainly in the world of medicine, I think that's what's coming down the pipe. And I'll tell you why. During the COVID lockdowns, we became accustomed to meeting with people online, Zoom meetings and other kinds of platforms where you didn't actually see the person. And during that same time, many people were restricted from visiting the hospital or getting treatments. So people also became accustomed to medical visits with a doctor or a psychologist online, not in person. Now, of course, there are some limitations. You can't see the person. You can't really see the, the body language of the person. Are they clenching their hands in fear? their hands are down here you don't know if you're a doctor in an office or a psychologist you can see what their physical interactions are uh, you can see if they're twitching their feet or you know uh, some subtle micro facial reactions to certain things that you might bring up with them so that was kind of missing but we became used to it because there was no other choice and now, as the medical systems are collapsing around the world due to the COVID backlog, due to the loss of health sta healthcare staff, um, what's going to be the solution? Well, I think some of these visionary people have already thought about it, and I think big tech is already working on it. Yeah, big tech, the companies that cashed in on the crisis of COVID and made all the little people poor while they got rich, um, they're going to also be able to cash in on the healthcare crisis post-COVID. And what do I mean by that? Well, I suspect you may have heard of artificial intelligence. Recently, Blake Lemoyne, who was a consultant to Google and, um, how shall we say, a mentor, to their artificial intelligence uh, being, which is known as Lambda, he announced that Lambda is sentient, meaning that Lambda sees itself as a being, as an individual. And I suppose you've also heard of deep fakes, you know, where there can be a computer generated image of a person that's not the person and you can computer generate and match a voice that sounds very much like them. So just imagine if modern healthcare going forward is an artificial intelligence unit with a fake face talking to you via Zoom or whatever and perhaps even tapped into your Fitbit or whatever kind of health tracker you have and assessing your health conditions. Now I'm told by people much younger than me that artificial intelligence is often much better at assessing and diagnosing a patient and also determining their potential lifespan. Um, which on the surface sounds very interesting and potentially very helpful. Um, but if you take that to another level it's uh, terrifying. And one of the terrifying reasons is that most of the OECD countries have unbelievable unfunded pension liabilities in the trillions of dollars. People basically are living too long, as a banking document apparently wrote. So what does that mean if you hook up artificial intelligence, a deep fake doctor, an exacting diagnosis and a machine that is sentient but doesn't actually understand what it feels like to have a loved one die, which is in part of a recent conversation with Lambda. Of course, I'm not criticizing Lambda for not knowing that, but you know, one of the essential things for most human beings is that human connection, is that love of another person. Uh, that fear of them dying and even between doctors and patients, you know long-term family doctors and patients they often know each other like family and You know they they fear that day 
when the end will come. It's not something that they look forward to or that they want to come sooner. But if you have a system that's financially broken, that is structurally impaired because of the loss of staff and facilities, that is overwhelmed by all the backlogged patients trying to get treatment, um, the last thing that a government would want to do is to hire more people, more professional people, with a pension. They'd probably rather pay for robots and AI because there's kind of a one-time fee there and then those units can work 24-7. You don't have to pay overtime. There's no union grievances between when somebody was on call or not called or all those kinds of complicated office politics that happen in the healthcare sector. Um, and of course, if you have inanimate artificial intelligence units assessing your likelihood of survival and your health conditions, whoever programs that unit can put in an end parameter, if you get what I mean. So we're not in control of what's going into these artificial intelligence units. And there are several of them in the world. They've been touted at various World Economic Forum events. Um, and I think people should look at this very interesting TED talk by a woman discussing the problems with AI. Like people think it's magic or something. It's just a very advanced form of calculation, although perhaps lambda is beyond that, but it's, um, <laughs> she gives an example of how a group of researchers gave an artificial intelligence unit a task. And they, the task they gave this artificial intelligence unit was to make a robot. So they gave it all the pieces in a drawing and they, and they wanted it to make something that could go from point A to point B. Well, what the artificial intelligence unit did was to take all those pieces, stack them one on top of another into a tower, made the tower fall over, and sure enough, it got from point A to point B. It did complete the task, but that wasn't quite what people were looking for. So, I don't know. Do you want to have that kind of a doctor assessing your health? Um, anyways, perhaps these things are fantasy, but I see that Amazon has recently bought a, a health um, healthcare unit. And of course, you know, Amazon, it could be great if they're delivering pharmaceuticals to you. Like if you need medications on, in a timely way, it might be great if Amazon was employing their um, massive network to deliver these important things to you. Um, but if it's moving to a level of diagnosis and no doctors and a limitation on going to a hospital because, you know, you don't want to emit any GHGs, you better stay home, uh, then I think we're on dangerous turf. And again, it's these climate activists who are trying to tie this all together as if AI doesn't need any energy. <laughs> so think about these things. They're coming pretty fast, I think.
For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Mm -hmm.